Today's episode of The Sit Down with Scott Dion Brown is brought to you by Jeanette McKenzie, Realtor at Forest Hill Signature, and Jewelry Forever at jewelryforever.ca. Enjoy the show. Broadcasting live from Glenmore Record Studios in Toronto, this is The Sit Down with Scott Dion Brown, your Sunday morning talk show with interesting guests, live musical performances, and the most fun you can fit in your coffee cup. Hosted by Scott Dion Brown and Regina Elena, this, this is, is The Sit Down with Scott Dion Brown. <laughs> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and a very happy Mother's Day to all the mothers of the world. And welcome to episode 179 of the Sit Down with Scott Dion Brown. I am your host, the one, the only, Scott Dion Brown, and I am joined by the greatest co-host in all the galaxy, the one, the only... Regina Lena, happy Sunday, fun day, happy Mother's Day, happy, it's really nice outside day. <laughs> Sky is, I don't see any clouds. I'm looking out the window, it's just blue. Now, I can't see too much of the sky from here, but from what I'm seeing, it's <laughs> pretty good. It's so nice outside. It's cherry blossom season, which means it's also allergy season, but here we are. <laughs> hey, Scott. Hi. Do you get a? Uh, do you get allergies? Mm-hmm. That's the only reason why I said it. I don't. Uh, I don't think I get allergies. No, at least not to that. I not I to, appreciate yeah. um, masks for that reason because you just cover it up, and the allergens stay away, and people don't question why you're wearing a mask. Oh, yeah, good point. <laughs> Makes sense. Well, mm-hmm. masks have been slowly coming off, though. In fact, I found now when I go to places. I'm like usually one of the only per- people Same. wearing a mask in there. Mm-hmm. It's it's weird. It's weird. Like yesterday I was at Vaughn Mills and I wore a mask and everyone like it's so surreal to see people's faces and then forget that you're still wearing a mask. You're like, oh, they only see my eyes. <laughs> yeah, that was one thing I remember. Well, even when everyone was wearing masks, like if I'm walking down a hallway, and you know, like sometimes you nod at people or like, you give them a smile or whatever, like yeah. kind of nonverbal communication and like. It took me a long time to adjust. In fact, I still never did where like I'll I'll smile at somebody and then I realize I'm like, they can't see me smiling. Yeah. Especially if I'm wearing like my mask and my like big sunglasses. (laughs) I just look like they see nothing. Right. And I'm I'm like, I'm like. (laughs) They don't even see the eyebrows move at all. (laughs) You see nothing at all. No, it's it's true. Like I've learned to properly or like force myself to smize or I just say it. I'm like, hi, or thank you. You say smize? <laughs> oh, like smile with your eyes? So yeah, but I mean, if you're wearing sunglasses, it wouldn't make a difference. Yeah, it'd have to be like, you can only see like my eyebrows at the top of the glasses if, I, if I'm like, <laughs> then you can see them. I've never heard the term smize before, but it's actually pretty good. What? Okay, Tyra Banks made it like, it's probably in Webster now. Um, she made it a thing when she was modeling and um, what was that show? America's Next Top Model. Mm-hmm. She told everyone, smile, you smile with your eyes. Smile with your eyes. Mm-hmm. So let me see. <laughs> wait, wait. Okay, wait, I saw a smile. <laughs> I can't, but aren't you a model, Scott? Shouldn't you be able to smile? I mean, yeah, but I've never heard the term smize. Like, I, I, usually they say have strong eyes, like, like a strong look, but I've never, uh, never, uh, <laughs> Just practice smize. it. Practice smize, it, everybody. everyone. Yeah. Hey, happy Mother's Day. Hey, Scott. Hey, what's up? Uh, day, is that, Devon, is that you? I'm not sure. I think, I, I recognize your, uh, your profile pic, but, but hello, Datum. Happy Mother's Day. Good morning. Welcome to the show. Yes, we are. Uh, uh, well, I guess it's not really our Mother's Day. I mean, it is our Mother's Day special, but 
but none of us are mothers. <laughs> but neither of us are mothers. Good I do remember our very first Mother's Day special where we had your mom, my mom, and Jennifer C bring her daughter Christy um, on the show, and we gave them flowers, and they embarrassed us. It was a good time. <laughs> yeah, that, that was a nice episode, actually. Chatting, chatting with our moms. That was a good episode. Well, why don't we quickly, um, let's say, why don't you send a message to your mom for Mother's Day, and then I'll say to mine. Okay, well, mom, because I know you're probably watching, not now, but later. Happy Mother's Day um, to all of you who are in the GTA, like me, get hair and makeup, hit her up, beautified by Romina. Um, happy Mother's Day, mom. Thank you for everything that you do for us. I already sent you a card. We already had sushi. So, mwah, love you. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Perfect. And uh, hey, mom, happy Mother's Day. Love you very much. And um, I'll see you later today. And I want to thank you for everything for my whole life <laughs> thanks for making me <laughs> yeah thanks for making me and um and also uh yeah supporting me through everything and all that stuff and uh i wouldn't be who i am without you so thank you happy mother's day and happy mother days to all the mothers oh it is devon cool good morning devon hello hello um so uh, how was your week regine my week was good it was very busy um i tried to get out as much as i could because the weather in Toronto is finally cooperating and it's making me so happy. But when it's not warm outside and I get cold, I got this giant Udi. I don't Okay, this is not sponsored, ladies and gentlemen, first off. But look at this giant blanket hoodie type yeah, of thing. That's huge. So, <laughs> I had never heard of an Udi before this show when you told me about it beforehand. So You're it's... welcome. And I use it now as a blanket because I can't wear it during the show. <laughs> so it's basically a massive so it's basically a massive hoodie mm -hmm. that's really, really thick and plushy. And it's yeah. And I love plushy things, so when I wear it I feel like a plushy. <laughs> yeah. Looks good. Um how was your week? Uh it was good. I was editing most of the week. My uh in fact, yeah, um, I think she's been on the show D dana dana mm -hmm. beto mm -hmm. um she was on the show a while back but anyway she she brought me on board to uh produce a music video for her for mother's day actually oh nice um a filipino song but it's about mothers mm -hmm. and um so through the week we, we shot it and then i was editing it and obviously it had to be ready to be online on mother's day and so now it is and you guys perfect heard? Check it out if you guys search up uh, Dana's name on YouTube. You can find it. So it's D A N A. <laughs> yes, D A N A B E D D O E, and um, you'll see that there's a video there that uh, was directed by myself. Awesome. But, um, but yeah, that kept me busy through the week. Oh, also, I just wanted to ask you because I know last week it was my birthday special. We had shown your your music. Or we played your music. Yes. What has it been like since you've released your song? It's been, I mean, the, the, the reaction to the song has been really, really nice, which always feels good. And I'm glad that people uh, are liking it. Um, mm -hmm. But now I've kind of just moved on to like, um, it's like, okay, the song's done. Now it's time for the next step, right? So um, now I'm in the process of sending it around places. I want to see if I can get it played at a few different places. Um, and then obviously next is the um, promoting it. If I can do some like interviews and things like that, that'll be coming. And then uh, music video. Nice. So, nice. so it's um yeah. So it's like it feel it felt really good to get it out. Like I haven't mm -hmm. I haven't put out an, just an original song just under my own name in quite a long time. So mm -hmm. that felt nice. It was good to get it out. Um, but it's like you know, there's that brief moment of oh that feels good. But then it's okay now. It's you know. On to the next thing so so question for you another question so it's the acoustic version so can we expect like a punk rock version or a pop version or yeah a scott dion brown I, version yeah i'm glad you asked that because yes so it's a weird story with how the song came around it was like so i started writing it around when i was going to be interviewed on actually joel reckless show um he was like, oh, yeah, Scott, do you want to come back on and be the, on the show? I'm like, sure. And he's like, you know, you can perform. This was like a few months ago now. Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh, and, you know, you come on, you can perform one or two songs. And so, again, it was leading up to that. I thought, OK, well, I could go on the show and just play a couple of covers. But I'm like, what would be the point of that? Like, in general, you go on a show to promote, you know, what you're up to. Right. Mm -hmm. 
So I use the time leading up to that show to write write a song. And so that's the song I wrote. I wrote every day on, on an acoustic guitar. Um, but while I was writing it, um, I mainly wrote it on guitar. But while I was working on the lyrics through like the second verse, especially, sometimes I would write it on the piano. Like just I was kind of going between them. Mm -hmm. And I noticed just because of the way guitar works and the way piano works, you kind of you kind of default to playing slightly differently on each instrument just because, you know, guitars have more of like a strumming pattern you need and piano is more, I don't know, flexible. Anyway, the, what I found is so when I would sit down and play even just like the straight music for the song, mm -hmm. the way I would play it on guitar, I would naturally play it like a different groove on piano. Mm -hmm. but I liked both I was kind of like oh that's neat like could this be could this be a <laughs> piano song you know could this yeah. be, you know and so then I started floating around this idea in my mind of like oh maybe I could do like multiple versions of the song and then I thought nah I shouldn't do that I should just have one version so then what I was going to do was have um, since I liked how the piano feel was and the guitar feel was I thought oh maybe I'll have verse one be the guitar and verse two could be the piano or vice versa and I was working around like that and so when I started producing the song, I I was going to make it a full like produced version with a whole bunch of instruments and everything. And then somewhere along the line, I kind of hit a roadblock with it where I was just like, I wasn't happy with how it was sounding and I was still experimenting. And I realized, okay, I, I, I you know, the melody's good. I like the lyrics, that's all good, but I, I need to do a lot more work in terms of like how I want to arra arrange this full version. Mm -hmm. And I realized it's going to take a lot longer. And I thought, you know what, though? You still have this version, this simple acoustic guitar version that you already performed live on this show. Like that version is it. That's a completed song. You should just put that out. Mm -hmm. So. So that's eventually what it became. Now, what's funny about the acoustic guitar version, though, is like it's not just acoustic guitar. Like even though there is acoustic guitar, there's like a whole bunch of other instruments I ended up adding. So in it in, it in itself is still a fully produced version, but. I feel like that version is like just the, I don't know, kind of the bare bones version of the song. Mm -hmm. And yes, later down the line, I am planning to do an actual full out. Symphony of nine. No, style is it? type deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe. And I haven't fully, I haven't fully decided exactly what genre that one's going to be. Like I'm still been, I've been playing around with it. I have some ideas, but so it's coming. I'm not sure when, but, but yes, that's true. I'm glad you um, noticed that because. I thought that I'm like if I put everyday acoustic, that implies that there's another one coming. Yeah, <laughs> I was curious. I mean, the acoustic is nice. The acoustic is nice. I feel like it fits the song, but I am very curious to what you do with it. Yeah, I, I it's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be very different. So Ooh. keep your eyes peeled, people. Keep your eyes. Peeled. <laughs> no, keep your ears peeled. <laughs> oh yeah, I guess that makes more sense. Yeah. Eyes will be for the music video, but uh, but first we'll work on the, we'll get that first and then ears for exactly. the new version. Exactly. <laughs> um, oh, one thing I wanted to uh, talk about that mm -hmm. I actually read last night. Um, Valkyrie, Ray, Valkyrie, Ray, Valkyrie, Ray, Valky Ray. Anyway, she's like the she. I think she was streamer of the year last year. Ooh. Really, really popular. Um, Filipino too, actually. Um, anyways, last night she tweeted out a tweet that made me think mm -hmm. about stuff it says please stop shipping me with friends it's really mm -hmm. uncomfortable and creepy literally every guy friend i interact with comes with some random anonymous accounts making not only the worst slash wildest assumptions but they get mad when i'm not interacting with their favorite insanity mm -hmm. so that's what she tweeted out so I guess she is uh, getting annoyed or um, um, bothered by people constantly shipping her with everyone. And so the idea is like every time, like she says, every time she streams with a, a male, mm -hmm. everybody immediately starts talking like they're dating and, you know, saying all these things and she finds it Annoying. uncomfortable. That's fair. I mean, okay, first off, you mentioned right off the top, she is Filipino and like, I love being a Filipino and I'm prideful of being a Filipino, but one toxic, there's many toxic tricks, okay? One of them being specifically that on social media, they are quick to assume and quick to put people together. 
they're very quick at shipping. Like if you look, I know you're not familiar with the Filipino pop, like pop culture, but what they tend to do is they'll take celebrities or um, uh, public figures and put them together and then create like a Bradgelina type of situation where they're like, okay, now you're Kimye or now you're whatever, whatever. And that's what it's, what they've been doing since for as long as I remember. And I grew up watching Filipino or following uh, Filipino celebrities. So I'm not surprised that you mentioning she's a Filipino gamer, that this is a situation that she's in. But it is annoying um, because what if she does have a boyfriend or what if she's, I don't know, maybe she's not out yet, you know, or whatever it might be. And you're now putting this person in this really awkward situation. Or maybe that guy is in a relationship and they don't know. It can't messy. Yeah, you know what it made me think of as well is like, uh, I guess it was a few years ago now, but I don't know if you're familiar with Ninja. For a while he was, I don't think he still is anymore, but he was, I know he was the biggest Fortnite streamer. He might have been one of the biggest gaming streamers at the time. Anyway, he was huge for for a while. Um, he still is, but I think, I don't know if he's as popular as he was. But I remember he got in a little bit of controversy because he announced, if I'm remembering correctly, he announced that he was no longer going to stream with women. And it was for it was for that exact reason. He said it was because every time he appears on stream with a girl, um, again the sh the shipping rumors immediately start, and he didn't like how it, um, how like he didn't like how it made his wife feel, and how it kind of you know he's married and all that stuff, and he just made him uncomfortable. And so this is kind of feeling feels like that a little bit. Well, I mean speaking of <laughs> let's just let it all out there when we started doing this show in 2018 2018 mm -hmm. um the more our show got popular or grew let's not say popular the more our show grew and the more our following grew um and the more people saw us together it was asked a few times i know probably not to you but to me like hey are you and scott together and i'm like no and then i realized it wasn't until I announced my engagement that people were like, oh, <laughs> hmm. or when you started mentioning your girlfriend on the show, people were like, oh, because remember at Jennifer's birthday party, that photographer was like, oh, are you guys together? And we're just like, no. Yeah. And that's the thing. And like our, you know, yeah, our show's growing, but you know, we're, you can just imagine how much worse it could get if we were already mm -hmm. experiencing some level of it. Mm hmm. And then you get to like when you get into the millions and millions of numbers like because the thing is if you've got millions of followers even a small percentage is still a large number right mm -hmm. so i've i've been i've been trying to think how i should feel about it because like i kind of remember when when ninja first made the announcement that he wasn't going to do it because he didn't like the feeling of being shipped in right mm -hmm. part of me was like that's i was like that's silly like you should just who cares like just like what people think or what people the rumors or whatever like they they don't have any bearing on reality so i was mm -hmm. like oh this just it just goes with the territory you know um but i can imagine if it happens all the time and again when you're in the millions and millions like i mm -hmm. i've never experienced it i guess you you haven't either you know very few people outside of like you know the celebrity world will have will really know what it feels like to have just millions and millions of people saying things about you all at once. Or the fact that they're creating these fake Instagram accounts as this shipment, <laughs> let's mm. call it that, right? Like, yeah. that's frustrating. Yeah, it's got to be, uh, it's got to be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So that's why, like, even with Valkyrie's tweet, I, part of me was like, I don't even know why she bothered to, to address it, you know, but but I guess it, it must be, you know, especially if, she, like, what is she saying it? Um, every guy friend I interact with, it comes with random slash anonymous accounts making. So basically it, it means anytime she tweets out or anything about or interacts with them, suddenly her timeline gets blasted full of all these accounts shipping them together. I guess there's a lot of bot accounts there, whether it be Facebook, Instagram, to yeah. Twitter. There's a lot of bot accounts. Um, okay, fine, Scott, you don't know what it feels like, but imagine if you were to have streamed with her and then all of a sudden there are all these accounts shipping you two together. Yeah, 
I mean, see, that's the, you know, honestly, the problem is that, like, as you say that, I'm like, yeah, I, that's, that's <laughs> fandom. Like, that's just what it is, yeah. you know. But I, again, I think it's easy for me to be like, whatever, I wouldn't care. But again, like, I, I've, I've never, I think I would, I, I would need to walk a mile in, in their shoes before mm -hmm. I can really judge it, you know. Because I do imagine, like, when someone posts a negative comment on one of my videos, right, which happens sometimes, um, it, it, it doesn't bother me, but it bothers me a little, right? Like, there's always mm -hmm. just, like, you get you read a comment, and even if I disagree, I'm, I'm still just like, okay, so just one, per you know, all right. But I've heard a lot of creators say it, right? Like, you can have 10,000 good comments, but then that one negative one will always stick out to you. Mm -hmm. And... I think I'm pretty even keel with like, you know, whatever, that's just life. But I can imagine if the if the numbers go up into the thousands and the hundreds of thousands, it must eat at you a little bit, mm -hmm. right? Especially if it's like a constant thing. But that's why people say don't read the negative comments. Like when I competed in a pageant in the Philippines, the one thing Bea Santiago said to me was do not go on Facebook and read the comments because it is going to get to you. And I was like, okay, sure. But then all of a sudden people are tagging you and like the official headshots and you're like reading to see what your family says. And then you get this negative comment, like again, toxic Filipino trait, you know, oh, she's too dark. Why is she here? Or whatever, whatever, whatever. I just like, you know what? It is what it is. I understand Filipinos see my skin color a lot differently back then. But there was one girl specifically, I won't say her name because I'm still friends with her. Um, she was reading the comments and it hit her really hard and she is diabetic and they were saying things like, oh, she's too big or why is she there? Like commenting on her weight, body shaming her the whole nine yards. Next thing you know, it this girl drops so much weight is not eating. Her sugar is all over the place. Again, she's diabetic, so that's not good for her. And it was just like to see what negative comments can actually do to someone in your face at that moment it's terrible yeah and i think especially when it first starts to happen you don't you don't really know how to prepare for it mm -hmm. right i can imagine because we all pretty much enjoy you know relative an anonymity online right in mm -hmm. that you know nobody really is paying attention to anything that anybody does but then suddenly if you f find yourself suddenly in a spotlight mm -hmm. It can be overwhelming. So, yeah. so there you go. Just be nice to people, online people. <laughs> Just be nice. Don't make comments about people's relationships and don't make negative comments well, about people. Well, one thing <laughs> I, I, I was talking to my girlfriend about it last night because I saw the tweet and I, and I obviously talked to her first about it being like, oh, maybe this could be something to talk about on the show. And mm -hmm. I said, what do you think about shipping and stuff? And she, and she um, mentioned it because it, it happens not just with, real people which actually which is interesting with ray and like ninja like they're actual human beings right mm -hmm. but what's more common is like people ship like characters together in in tv shows, shows and movies yeah. um but she mentioned like the way it's supposed to be and which is in fandoms it's kind of the unwritten rule but it's people ruin it but the idea is like yeah you're gonna ship your favorite characters you're gonna write fan fiction about your favorite characters all this stuff but the actors that play the characters should be left out of it Mm -hmm. right like generally speaking it's kind of a well like yeah you can ship whoever you want but like you don't really the like actors who are playing the characters don't need to like <laughs> be bombarded with it or 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 mm -hmm. tweeted at about it right and i thought that's a that's a good point because like again i i think shipping is part of the it's part of fandom i mean i think it's a fun thing like people see two characters that they like and they like to make their little fantasy ideas or stories of them being together like i don't really have a problem with that but i can understand how it could be, I don't know, awkward for the actors. In fact, actually, you know what it reminded me of? So a few years ago, when was it? We we interviewed Christina Tonteri on this mm -hmm. very show. And at the time, Warrior Nun had just come out. Mm -hmm. And not long before that, um, my girlfriend mentioned something that happened to, I think it was one of the actors on Teen Wolf, but I'm not 100% sure. But one of the actors on Teen Wolf was at a fan convention or something. And 
I guess fandom had been shipping him with somebody else in the cast or something. And he got asked about it point blank. Like, what do you, you know? Mm -hmm. And I don't even remember what he said or how he replied. I can't, I don't, I don't know. But, but what he said was not something that members of the fandom wanted to hear. Mm -hmm. So I'm not mm -hmm. sure if he dismissed it or whatever it was. Point is, it got him in hot water with the fandom and he had to apologize. Like, a whole bunch of stuff happened, right? And so I knew, I heard that story. And then when we were interviewing Christina, um, People were like, oh, ask about Avatris, Avatris, because it was like what? Ava and Beatrice. Those were the two characters, right? And I kept seeing it in the chat. Ask about that. Ask about that. And as I was seeing that, I was like, I kept getting like flashes like, I do not want to put her on the spot. What if yeah. I ask her this? And then she says something that she, because she didn't know the question was coming. And then people get mad at her. And then it's my fault that people get mad at her, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's why I didn't, I didn't want to bring it up. And also, we, what I realized now would have been nice if we could have, if we could have had a text chat, yeah, as well, so that I could have asked her about it silently first, and then she could let me know. You know, that would have been. But that show was also very overwhelming. <laughs> it was one of our first shows where it was like, wow, with all these people well, yeah. out of nowhere, just like in the. It was great. It was great. Thing? Thank you, everyone, for joining us. But it was like very overwhelming when we weren't prepared for it. But I think yeah, so we, we should have had a text chat. Going. yeah well we had a whole fandom just right there yeah it was yeah. crazy i'm surprised they didn't put you two together <laughs> yeah well I, <laughs> yeah I, but but what's but again what's interesting about that is it's like um um they were like bombarding her with the with the with these questions mm -hmm. and I was especially concerned. I didn't want to ask because at the time, I think I had only seen like one episode or two episodes. I didn't have time to watch the entire show. I'm glad you didn't ask because I didn't watch any of it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, but that's the thing that also made me more worried, right? Like, I think if I had, if I had, um, seen the entire series, because there's mm -hmm. a couple scenes where they kind of hint that those two characters might like each other, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but because I hadn't seen the whole series at that time, I was like, I didn't know if it was something that's not implied in the show at all, but people oh, are just shipping fair. them. People mm -hmm. are shipping them because, you know, because they just like those two characters. Um, anyways, so that's why I didn't bring it up. But the point is, even then I was aware of like, how serious some, some fans take it and mm -hmm. how aggressive they can be, especially going after... Um, when they're trying to get the actors to talk about it or, you know what I mean? And so I can imagine if you have that level of, of intensity and then they're not just shipping a character you play on TV, but they're shipping you because it's different. <laughs> Look, I remember we're doing Star Wars, um, Kylo Ren and uh, Rey, right? The people shipping them called themselves Raylos. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> yeah. But the uncute side is that there were some people in that group who they would like send negative messages to Adam Driver's wife. Oh no. Yeah, because he's with the wife. He's oh got my a wife. God. But people want him to break up with her so that he could be with, with Daisy Ridley, you know? That's insane. Okay, that's that's rude. See, that's why it's not nice to do that. Yeah. Because there's that's actually why... people behind the scene or behind the yeah. screen, sorry. I guess it's just like the, I guess that's the dark side of it. I mean, the thing I try to be aware of and like, I'm also aware of it just even from streaming myself is that it's not most people that do these things. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes the ones that are doing those things are going to be typically like either very young kids who don't really understand or people who just don't in general, like they're not socially awkward. They don't really understand mm -hmm. how to be, you know what I mean? And so... I think it's important to try to keep that in mind, you know, but it, I can imagine it can get tough. Because again, if you've got millions of followers and 1% of your fan base is doing that, 1% mm -hmm. of a million is still a, a fair lot chunk of people. Of people. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Hey, Thomas, chugga chugga woo woo. Happy Mother's Day to all of you. Thanks, Thomas. Happy um, Mother's Day. Happy, happy Mother's Day to you, Thomas. <laughs> Anything is possible. It's 2022. Sure, why not? But, um, <laughs> but uh, I will pass your Mother's Day, your Happy Mother's Day wishes to all the mothers 
who are watching Thomas because um, I'm not a mother. Regine's not a mother, but uh, you know, we what? have mothers. <laughs> we have mothers and there are a lot of mothers out there. Yes. Everybody's got a mother because um, that's how biology. Uh, <laughs> that's how it works. But, Did you uh, know I was uh, actually um, uh, sent home from the hospital on Mother's Day? So I was born two months early. So then I was in NICU for two weeks and I came home on Mother's Day. Oh. So, so the best Mother's Day gift my mom had probably ever received. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I guess so. Yeah. The, the day you came home from the hospital is not, they don't, that's not an occasion, right? They don't usually do that. Like there's not a name for that, is there? No. But because I was um, in an incubator for so long, I'm sure my family... I was born at four pounds, so I oh. think, <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, two months two months early. So uh, so just seven months in the... in the. I should have actually been born in June, but I was born in April. I was like, uh, no, I don't want a summer birthday. <laughs> you just wanted to get out there. Exactly. I was too eager. <laughs> Well, there you go. So happy, happy Mother's Day, home day. Happy <laughs> Mother's Day home. Yeah. Um, let's do the ads. Yes. And then we're going to come back and chat a little bit more. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, today's episode of The Sit Down, this Mother's Day extravaganza where we've talked about characters shipping. and actors shipping, <laughs> is brought to you by some very important people. They are, of course, our ad advertisers mm -hmm. um people the toronto real estate market is growing and changing every day mm -hmm. and in these challenging times you need someone in your corner jeanette mckenzie realtor at forest hill signature is committed to looking out for you she'll go the extra mile to ensure you have all the information you need to make a decision you can feel confident about Purchasing a home is one of the biggest financial investments you'll make in life. Don't leave it to chance. Mm -hmm. Call Jeanette McKenzie at Forest Hill Signature. She's my realtor, and she could be yours. Call today at 416-523-0408 or email jmckenziehomes at gmail.com. Jewelry forever. Conveniently located at CF Markville Shopping Center on 5000 Highway 7 East Markham. They do custom-made jewelry, repairs, and change watch batteries all done on site. Jerry over at Jewelry Forever is an incredible artist. If you have a vision for some custom work that you would like made or jewelry you need repaired, he's the man to do it. And you have a fantastic deal worked out with them, don't we, Regine? We do. If you go in, run in there right now if you forgot Mother's Day was today and let them know that Scott and Regine sent you and you'll get 15% off your entire purchase. That's right. 15% off. 1-5%. Mention the show. And that's right. I don't know if you'll have time to whip up a uh, custom piece of jewelry today, but you know what? They have a fine selection of things already in store. I'm sure you'll find something great. Head on over to Jewelry Forever and find out more at jewelryforever.ca. If you would like to advertise on the show, it's very easy, isn't it, Regine? It's simple. All you guys have to do is email us at radioshowad, that's radioshowad at gmail.com. That's right. We do this show live every week, people. And we also do the ads live every week. What does that mean? It means you can personalize them week to week. Do you have an event, a sale, something happening at a particular time in a particular place? You let us know. We let your potential client place know in real time. It's a great way to build a brand new relationship with a brand new audience. Get in touch. Radio show ad. Radio show ad at gmail.com. And we're back. Scott. Hello. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Have you ever considered being one of those auctioneer people? Because you talk really fast. <laughs> you know, I I'm actually quite pleased with how uh, quick I can be with those ad reads. Now, I've gotten pretty good at them, eh? I'm just like, when you said that, I'm like, is he breathing? <laughs> like, what's happening? Yeah, especially getting out that speech. I've gotten pretty uh, good at, like, just... It's a great brand. It's a great way to get a brand new relationship with... You know, you know. I couldn't even do it just now, but yeah. <laughs> you have to be in the moment to be able to just go... <laughs> well, that's the thing. The, the auctioneer guys, I'm amazed what they do. I'm wondering, like... It must be because where I would run out of run into trouble is like if I, if I don't know what I'm trying to say, mm -hmm. you can't like 
you can't think about what you're trying to say while speaking that quick, right? So you kind of already have to know what you're saying. Try it. Try it with our ads. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, how do I get the paper? Because it's like really fast, right? Mm -hmm. The Toronto, the Toronto real estate market is growing and changing every day. In these challenging times, you need someone in your corner. Tell me, real estate reporters, just going to look up for you. Yeah, I guess, I guess I can kind of do. Sold. It. But I think they also like fill in. Like, don't they do a lot of like? They also get like, like they'll Maybe. be like. I think they have extra words that aren't words in there. So like, if I was like, I'm selling this coffee mug, you know, they'll be like. And when I'm selling this coffee mug, like I think there's a bit of like they're not not everything they say is a word. I think no. <laughs> maybe. got ten. They got two. They got three. You know. I think that's what they do. <laughs> I feel like we need to investigate and actually take a clip and just because you ha you slow can it slow it down, yes, yeah, so to just see what they're actually saying or um, auto caption it and see what happens. I think there's going to be a lot of. I think I think that's true. I might be wrong, but I think that is a thing they do. But I have to check. We should know. figure it out. Stay tuned, guys. <laughs> um. So before we move on, final thoughts on shipping. I'm not a fan of shipping. I mean, obviously, as a high schooler, I was totally into it, and I was totally shipping celebrity crushes. But maybe low key shipping them with my name. <laughs> but enough. um no, now that I'm older and now that I have kind of grown into low key public figure, I don't know what I'd consider myself. I kinda I understand. We're both super famous, Regina. Duh. I kind of understand um shipping and how it can be a little bit damaging, so I'm not a fan of it. I think what, what my girlfriend said to me make it a lot of sense in that I think shipping, there's nothing wrong with it in the sense of, yeah, you know, it's part of fandom. Mm -hmm. Have fun, write fan fiction, draw your fan art, do all those things. Um, but I think those things should stay in your fantasies and in your, you know, communities and all this stuff. I, I think... There needs to be a, a understanding that the people that you're shipping, you know, whether it's a streamer who's an actual person or an actor or actress who's playing that character, mm -hmm. um, they are a person that's living an actual life. Mm -hmm. And um, it's it's it exists in a reality that's independent from the one you've invented in your mind. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important to remember that that border exists and it should be respected yeah so yeah it can be it can just be awkward like you know so i guess have your shipping but leave the actual people out of it because it doesn't mm -hmm. really have anything to do with them right and you know don't go chasing people's signif real significant others online and yeah. giving them hate because they are human beings too exactly exactly good i like that <laughs> um, and with um, that <laughs> moving on to the next con uh, discussion um, I'm not sure what we should talk about I've got a few options here but uh, any thoughts uh, we talked briefly before about the, the Johnny Depp trial that's happening <laughs> speaking of shipping <laughs> and leaving people significant others out of it yeah. um, I'm not really huge on or not, I'm not up to date with what's happening sorry I can't speak English um I'm not really familiar with what's going on. I have little tidbits of what I've captured from social media, TikTok. Apparently that is what my algorithm is right now because I watched one video. Um, I'm curious to know what really is happening. So Scott, can you please tell me? <laughs> yeah, I've watched, I haven't watched a ton, but I've watched a lot more than I was expecting to. <laughs> you yeah. know what got me into it is like, in the, I was kind of trying to not be paying attention because I'm like, whatever, this has nothing to do with, you know, yeah. these are just two people going through a messy divorce. You know, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't, but it's being live streamed everywhere. And so I did click on one video when, when, when Johnny himself was actually on the, on the stand. Mm -hmm. And 
I mean, I just found it so interesting because a large part of it was just talking about his career, you know? Mm -hmm. And so there was just part of me that was just pulled in by him talking about, oh, yeah, you know, like, I think his lawyers was asking him, like, how do you got started in the industry? And and we got to hear stories about his first film and how he got into acting. And so I was kind of just interested in that regard. And then they go into, like, really serious things. I mean, it, we learn about... Johnny talked about his really sad childhood. He was he was a, a victim of, of, of abuse. Um, had a really, really hard time growing up. And I don't know. I, I mean, I, I kind of just ended up... I watched more of it than I probably would have planned to. Mm -hmm. um, the thing that's been interesting to watch, though, is the, the media shift has really flipped around. Like, before the trial... Everybody was basically Team Amber, right? Mm -hmm. Like everybody was thinking, oh yeah, like the, the media narrative was that Johnny was the abusive one and and all this stuff. But it seems to be shif shifting now and flipping mm -hmm. around. And I was I had watched a little bit of coverage of the trial in the UK that Johnny lost, but on YouTube, a lot of people were saying even then that there were some weird things that happened in that trial and that. And that it didn't really look like Amber was as innocent as she was Portraying herself acting. to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so it's been interesting watching it shift this way. The messed up part is like, I watched some of this testimony. I didn't watch it live, but I watched some of her testimony when she's talking about um, some of the stuff that Johnny allegedly did to her. Mm -hmm. And like watching it, I'm not even going to repeat it because I don't know if you should. But, or like if it'll get us demonetized or something. But the point is, there are some pretty horrible things that she was accusing him of doing. Oh, no. And, but the thing is, some of the stuff she's been saying, it sounds insane. And then you, I watched some of the reaction to it. It's like everyone's, she's saying all this horrible stuff, but also nobody seems to be believing her. So, so she's like, just like speaking to speak, but not. Well, online, everybody's everybody's convinced that she's just making it all up. Mm -hmm. And so, and I know like one thing that's happening, like she, when she was telling the story, like she started crying and everything, but then everybody zoomed in and like, there's like, there are no tears. Yeah, it's interesting. Like I, well, first off, thanks for filling us in on what's actually been happening. Because I'm just like, what is happening? Why is Johnny Depp all over? Yeah. yeah. Why is John, I'm like, am I talking about Johnny Depp or Orlando Bloom? Sorry. Or like, why is he all over the place all of a sudden? Yeah. And all I see is like her with tissues and her, um, what was it? I think like she had a water bottle and she had opened it up. And then I think like a police officer was walking by and she like quickly shoved it in her pocket. And I'm like, whoa, that was cool. Mm -hmm. But how did, how did she do that? But okay, what's going on? I didn't on? know that. I didn't hear that one. Yeah, that. like she was like, I don't have a water bottle. Like imagine like she opened the water bottle and then the police officer was walking by and she like quickly like, it was like nothing had yeah. happened. Yeah. Because she didn't want to be seen with the water bottle? Is that? Yeah. And people were like, ooh, what's in the water bottle? <laughs> oh, I didn't see. I didn't hear that one. I'll find it's, it on um, TikTok and send it to you. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, send it to you. Um, yeah, I mean, so for people who don't know the general idea of what happened is that, so I guess if they were married two years and then sometime after that, she published an article that was basically, I can't remember the headline, but it was like, she basically claimed that she was the victim of, it was during the Me Too movement at the height of the Me Too movement. Mm -hmm. And she wrote this article saying that she was a victim of all this stuff. And even though she didn't by name, name Johnny, it's like everybody by reading the article knew, okay, well, you're obviously talking about, about Johnny, right? Mm -hmm. And it was after that article came out that he was dropped from like the Pirates franchise. And like, so oh, it kind no. of, yeah. So that article coming out caused a whole bunch of stuff for him in his career. And, uh, and then it, he was um, like papers were publishing that he was like an abuser and all this stuff. And so that's why what happens now is Johnny has in an attempt to clear his name, he's decided yeah. to counter sue her. Good. And now we're seeing, now the thing is in the UK, I think he sued hit her and he sued the newspaper there that published that he was a, a, a an abuser and, and he lost that. But 
there was a, I can't, I don't know the details, but there's weird stuff that happened with that trial, or there are certain things that weren't admissible that should have been, and all this stuff. And now we're here in the American trial, where I think a lot of the stuff that couldn't come out in the UK one is coming out here. Mm -hmm. And so now it's interesting to see the narrative has 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 shifted. shifted. I'm curious though, like say, because um, I think they're still going to trial, but say his name does get cleared and everything is good what happens then like are you, like what happens to the pirates of the caribbean franchise are they gonna be like actually johnny we want you back <laughs> like what do yeah. they do what well, happens that's the that's the interesting thing right because it sounds like they kind of just moved away from him immediately when there's even a hint of controversy right because they just mm -hmm. didn't want to deal with it now in the trial apparently they he got asked like would you want to go back and he said no he said for no amount of money would i want to go back because i think yeah. he's kind of i guess jaded or angry about it i guess mm -hmm. Um, so I don't know what's going to happen, but I mean, one thing I will say, and again, because it's, you know, you've got the court of law and you've got the court of public opinion, right? Mm -hmm. And before this trial, the court of public opinion, I think was firmly on Amber's side, right? There was a contingent of fans of Johnny's who were like, you know, Amber Heard should be out of Aquaman too. She shouldn't be in Aquaman, you know, because of this, you know, yeah. um, but by and large, I think. Johnny seemed to be the only one who was really facing any sort of professional consequences and like his his mm. reputation and stuff. But I think what's happened now with all this stuff that's come out in the trial is even if he loses the case, I think he's won in the court of public opinion now. Like I, I can't see unless something really drastic happens in the next little while. My prediction is that he will come out of this not better than ever probably but i think unscathed mm -hmm. like i think his rep now so will it be the something like will he do another pirates movie i think he probably won't mm -hmm. but i don't think it'll be because disney doesn't want him to it might be just because he doesn't want to mm -hmm. but i just think this has this trial is he's he's gonna come out the other side looking looking like the good guy mm-hmm that's what I think, anyway. That's what I think. But uh, I don't know, because I don't know if you've heard, like, there's some weird stuff that came out, like, like there's a thing that Amber, um, like, pooped on his bed. Did you hear about that? No. That's one of the big ones. I don't really out. follow it, but that's gross. So apparently, she, yeah, she <laughs> dropped one on his bed as like a, as a joke or something. But if you want to do it as a joke, get the joke poop and then put it on someone's bed yeah. don't actually ew yeah and so that's why when johnny's talking about it like apparently so she did that and then she blamed it on the dog and then johnny's like our dogs are like four pound little like the, the, <laughs> the thing is larger than the dog you know so anyway so because, and the thing is like that has come out and again it's it's kind of a silly thing but because it it stands out so much like even seeing mm -hmm. how you how you react like it's such a crazy <laughs> thing to hear yeah. and so stuff like that has become sort of the dominant um the dominant like meme to come out of the uh, mm -hmm. out of the trial there's a and lot so of I, things coming out of that trial that is just yeah. like everywhere yeah. let me see if i can find that water bottle thing for you now actually all right and yeah but that's because so because of that it's like i think when the trial ends what you're gonna have is people will assume that Johnny if he loses people will oh he should have he should have won or he lost because of a technicality mm -hmm. and I I don't know if Amber's career I'm not, I'm not sure but I don't think it's going to be good for her coming out of the mm -hmm. on the other side of this the, the weird part that the thing I felt weirdest about was the allegations that she's making are so serious and so horrifying like hearing about what he's saying or, or hearing what she's saying he did Mm -hmm. you know and then watching how so many people online don't believe her at all there's just this part of me in the back of my mind that's like how sad is it if what she's saying is true and none of it mat and like nobody believes it you know what i mean so i felt weird watching it because i'm watching her speak and i don't I, i'm finding myself i like obviously nobody knows what happened but me personally i'm not i'm finding myself not believing her really i just don't i, I i'm looking at the two sides but there's this part of me that's like, what if I'm wrong? What if everybody's wrong? You know, mm -hmm. it's such a strange thing. And the other part, I guess it's hard for me is. They're both again, actors. 
Sorry? Well, they're, they're both, both actors. Well, that too. Yeah, exactly. You, you know, is the winner just going to be the person who's better at acting? Yeah, that's that's the, true. And the Grammy goes too. <laughs> yeah. But but the other part is I, I feel like it's very easy for me to watch this as entertainment. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like even when, like I told you, when I first got pulled into the, to the trial is because it felt like I was just watching a, a Johnny Depp interview on a podcast like I was just hearing oh cool like he's on some podcast and I'm just listening to him talk about his life meanwhile like he's fighting for his you life know, <laughs> his life fighting for his reputation Amber's doing the same they're both you know and so it's like easy for me to sort of forget and just watch this as oh this is like a courtroom drama you know mm -hmm. like oh wow this you know they need to edit some of the script it's so long but it's pretty intriguing <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's easy to kind of forget that this is real. Like these are mm -hmm. real people going through it. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. No, finish your thought. I was going to say, like, I mean, you know, and, and these types of things are going on every day in courts with people that nobody knows. Mm -hmm. But we're all intrigued and talking about it and weighing in because they're celebrities. But so I don't know. I, it gives me mixed feelings, but I can't deny that I'm intrigued and, you know, interested in the result. I'm just saying, I'm putting it out there, ladies and gentlemen, come back in maybe five years when this actually becomes a documentary or some sort of like film. Um, yeah. You heard it. I here think first. it's going like, <laughs> to, it's funny because that thought actually, I was watching it. I was like, this could be a film. Mm -hmm. You could make a movie about this story. Based on a true story. <laughs> yeah. In fact, you know what? They definitely will because they, and the thing is, especially now, they, they don't even wait very long. Like it's almost like as soon as it's over, they want to make a movie about it. It's probably oh. already being casted. <laughs> yeah, I think who, you're right. Who will play Do Johnny Depp? Will it be Johnny Depp? <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. If they, how weird would that be? To relive it? Yeah, no, maybe not. Yeah. Who will it who be? Knows? Stay tuned. <laughs> yep. So anyway, it's crazy. It's a crazy thing. Mm -hmm. Celebrities um, have been all over the place lately. Actually, now that I think about it. Mm -hmm. If you notice, like, controversially, I, f I find that there are a few celebrities who have been out there. Like, first, it was a Will Smith smack that was heard across the audience or the world. And now Johnny Depp. Um, it's, it's a little scary. And then Kim Kardashian promoting that she lost weight by eating tomatoes. But yeah, I heard about that. And then she got into some flack, right? Because mm -hmm. So she said she wanted to lose weight so she could fit into Marilyn Monroe's dress. Yep. And then people were really mad at her because she was, what, glorifying weight the loss? The fact that she ate tomatoes for X amount of days to lose 16 pounds. I'm like, hmm. coming from someone who has gone through her own battles with weight um, and eating disorders, that is not something you want, especially because there are a lot of people whether they want to admit it or not, who follow the Kardashians mm -hmm. and imagine being a girl or a boy who is, or a person who is following them and sees like, oh, if I want to lose X amount, 16 pounds in this much time, I'm just going to eat tomatoes too. Like I guarantee you, if you go to the grocery store, there's maybe no more tomatoes. <laughs> mm. Interesting. I, I, I don't know many of the details about it. Yeah, because I, I don't, yeah, those types of, uh, what do they call them? Like crash diets or whatever, mm -hmm. where you try to lose a lot of weight. They're not in like a... good for you. Trust yeah. me. I, well, can... I think I think anything that causes a very rapid change, right, mm -hmm. is going to not be good for you. Mm -hmm. And then after the was Met Gala, I've, I checked her social media, her Instagram story. And she's mm -hmm. like, oh, my God, I haven't had carbs in so long. Blah, 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 blah. And like she's all like gung-ho about eating pizza all of a sudden and i'm like you just told people that you purposefully ate tomatoes to lose weight and now you're like oh carbs yum well i guess because it's so she stopped the carbs to uh lose the weight to get into the dress mm -hmm. and, and now that she doesn't she... need the dress anymore she's like mm, pizza hmm. yeah, all in I one mean, day <laughs> it's yeah that's tough i mean uh, on the one hand i can understand The problem, I guess, is it walks a fine line. Like on the one hand, you know, it, it, I guess there's not anything fundamentally wrong with wanting to get into shape for something. Mm -hmm. But 
I guess it just depends how you. There is definitely a problem when you're when you're again a rapid weight loss, rapid weight gain, mm -hmm. right? So I don't know. I mean, you're a vegetarian, Scott. Do you eat tomatoes all day? <laughs> I mean, I do eat tomatoes every day, but it's not, <laughs> it's not the only thing I eat. Mm -hmm. I got. I like to make sure I get some protein in my in my meals because you need protein for stuff. But yeah, I think in general, I don't know. I don't know what to. I don't know much about about it, but it definitely sounds like there's nothing wrong with it, but there's also something wrong with it. Like, there's nothing wrong with trying to be fit, being healthy. Like, there's no, trust me, there's no problem with that. I mean, I do pageants and like, I find, okay, like, let's be right here. I am like, oh, she's promoting pizza. Here I am talking and I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> As you're talking, like, I get a Big Mac after every pageant. <laughs> saying anything yeah. but i don't go out there being like guys i stopped eating rice and sugar for x amount of months just to be this skinny i'm yeah. usually on the opposite end of that now being like oh you know you want to be healthy you want to yeah for me personally it is a constant battle so mm -hmm. watching and hearing kim kardashian kind of gloating is gloating even the right word to use about how fast she lost weight i'm like yeah it's not well is healthy. it is it different for like when you think of i don't know um thor um what's his name who plays thor uh the actor who plays thor i can't mm -hmm. remember his name anyway he's like super huge and shredded right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but we also know like obviously all of those guys when they're coming up for a film they all obviously spend way more time in the gym getting themselves to a point where they're, you know, movie ready, mm -hmm. right? Um, and they put themselves on a really, really intense regimen. I know like Hugh Jackman did the same for Wolverine. Mm -hmm. Is that different from, because they're, they're doing the opposite. They're putting on weight, putting on muscle, and they are doing it for the express purpose of that one film. And then when they're done, they'll, they'll well, probably... Well, I mean, it's not like they're promoting what they're doing. And like... I'm not saying, you know, that they're in a whole different category of celebrity influencers as the Kardashians, but they kind of are, <laughs> you know, yeah. like the Kardashians are a specific target audience. And there's a lot of people who look to the Kardashians on the latest trends and fads. And that's where my concern came in as being someone who I do follow them. I'm not going to lie. I do follow them. I do follow their social media, but to listen to her be like, Oh, I ate X amount of tomatoes for X amount of days so that I could be X amount of weight to fit in this one dress that no one could possibly fit in. Um, that's what bothered me. But mm. like, I, I, I do pageants. I purposely go to the gym right before the pageant week to make sure that I am the best version of myself, but I'm not here promoting how to lose weight X amount, like 10 times faster than the average person would. Yeah, I guess the specific, so the thing that kind of rubbing me the wrong way is the specifics of like, yeah, all I'm eating is t that part. I'm just eating tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I can see that. I, Especially because my, I think my general view of things, right, is like every diet that, like I, I don't know, my my philosophy, let's say on on dieting and diets and stuff, is that every every single diet works and every single diet doesn't work mm -hmm. in the sense that if you stop eating all food, you will lose weight, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's just how it works right but so in her case just eating tomatoes yeah you're, you're gonna lose weight because you're not eating enough nutrients that's what's happening but those types of diets they don't so it will work but they don't work in the sense that as soon as you stop going on that diet you any gains you make or things you lose are gonna it's gonna go back to normal mm -hmm. right and so there's going on a diet like that i find is not the way to do it like if you're concerned about your your health which i think you should everyone should be concerned about your health but your whatever your body whatever all these things right i think the real trick is to just have a sustainable 
long-term healthy diet, not a diet wherein you change all of your stuff, lose your weight, and then you think it's just going to, no, you, you mm -hmm. just need to find like, uh, if you just eat healthy. Mm -hmm. And the thing is there's, there's no version of a healthy diet that has you starving yourself. Like no healthy diet is like that. Right. No. And it's usually the aftermath of all of that, that kind of trickles down and gets you and bites you in the butt. Cause believe me, <laughs> been there, done that. It's not fun. Yeah. So I don't know. It's tough. And I got, it's, I guess, again, it's talking about celebrities again. It's like, it's tough to be every single thing she says, even if in her mind, it's like innocent. Mm -hmm. unfortunately the reality is she's got millions and millions of people listening and not all of them will understand the subtlety not all of them will be able to understand the specifics of her situation or like because mm -hmm. you are right unfortunately is that when she says oh yeah i decided i'm just gonna I, i'm trying to lose weight to fit into this dress and and you know it's just for this one thing and then I'm, you know some people are going to read that and be like okay this is what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna do that and then you know because I'm not gonna lie, like I was like when she's like, "Oh, I ate tomatoes." I'm like, "Ooh, so if I eat tomatoes all day, I'm like, oh wait, what am I doing? Like, what is happening? Why mm -hmm. am I follow falling into this like rabbit hole? No, you need yeah. more than just tomatoes to, ugh, yeah. yeah. It's tough. Well, it's our culture, I guess, with all the body mm -hmm. image stuff and everything. It's difficult. I like how this episode just became all about celebrities and dissecting yeah, what a, they're doing. Yeah, this became a pretty heavy dra heavy celebrity drama episode. Talked about. And we weren't even planning on talking about Kim K. <laughs> it's Mother's Day. <laughs> She's a mom. <laughs> she is a mom. There That's you why. go. You're welcome. <laughs> and I think Amber Heard's a mom, and uh, I don't think Valky Ray's a mom. But she but, has uh, a mom. <laughs> but she has a mom. Yeah. That's right. All of these were related to Mother's Day because every person involved either is a mom or has a mom. Mm -hmm. That's how we justify it. There we um, go. You doing anything for Mother's Day today? Or you said you already saw your mom, right? Yeah, we saw my mom. Yeah, I, I saw my mom yesterday. Um, so my mom being beautified by Romina, she is always doing hair and makeup. And my stepdad being foodie dasig. Look at these plugins. Um, they are very busy around holidays, either doing hair and makeup or food catering, things like that. So we did it yesterday. And then today we are going to see uh, my fiance's mom. It's, it's nice outside. So I'm hoping we actually get to be outside today. And you're seeing your mom? I am, yeah. I'm gonna drive up and uh, and say hello and uh, spend some time with her, and also my Lola too, who is also a mom. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day to your mom and Lola. Yeah, so I'll see them later today and bring them some flowers and all that stuff. Aww. So, yeah. Do they like um, flowers? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. My mom doesn't like. I think that's where I get it from. I was never grew up around people receiving flowers because my mom doesn't really like flowers. And so I think that's why when people are like, here's flowers, I'm like, I don't know what to do with you. <laughs> Makes sense. I mean, yeah, I think my, my mom likes them. I mean, you know, you, you put them in a vase and you sit them on the table. I have one. And I'm like, so Kate Stabu, when she gave me flowers, I'm like, thank God you gave me a vase or a vase, whatever you want to call it, because I don't think I have one. <laughs> so now you can just, now you can just now save I have that one. one. That's exactly. good. Actually, we ended up with a few because, um, for in the past sometimes we'll get sent flowers like either my girlfriend will for either her birthday like some of her friends will send you know what i mean um and some of these ones especially the ones that get delivered to your house they have they come with a vase mm -hmm. so like they arrive and like I, I remember i opened it and i'm like oh it's a plastic it's just a cardboard box and then you pull it open and there's, there's an actual glass vase inside so we have like three or four vases that i'm like okay well now is it vase or vase? Because you said vase in the beginning, which got me saying it, and now you're saying vase. <laughs> I think I I tend to s jump between them. Mm. Do you say tomato I, or tomato? Typically tomato. I don't say tomato. I tend to say vase, but I think that's just because I'm trying to be pretentious. Is it because I said vase and then it tricked your mind to saying vase? I don't know. Well, it's like, like vase. Vase. Gonna say that. It's a vase. It's a vase. And so when I want to sound fancy, I'll say vase. Do you say caramel or caramel? 
caramel. Okay, just checking. Caramel. No, I don't say caramel. Isn't it interesting caramel. how they're, the words are all spelt like a specific way, but people say it differently? Yeah. It's, 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 I guess it's the way accents. Like you say schedule, I say schedule. Yeah. <laughs> do you and say schedule... scissors or skizzers? Sorry. Who but says skizzers? I do. <laughs> you say skizzers? <laughs> I know they're actually pronounced scissors, but I call them skizzers. Leave me alone. No. Well, that's fine. But, but, <laughs> so that's not like an accent. That's like a. No, it's just how it's spelled. <laughs> yes, it is spelled skizzers. Yeah. Okay, good. I, I thought for a second that there, you, you were telling me like, oh, did you know that there's like. <laughs> It's a regular, it's a, pro people pronounce it skizzers. It's a regular way. I'm like, really? No. Yeah. Well, I say schedule because actually schedule is an interesting one for me because, um, schedule is like the traditional, I guess, originally British. And then uh, because of, because of Canada, like Canadian way to say it. And so like, if you watch like news broadcasts from like the fifties or sixties, mm -hmm. that's what they say schedule. Um, but obviously American influence and American media has made it because in the U S they say schedule. But I remember when I was in elementary school, like grade seven, I think I had one teacher who he, one time he was like talking to the class and he was like, yeah, everybody check your schedule. He goes, Oh, sorry, schedule. And you could tell like he was saying it in a way that like he considered himself to be, I think he was, you know, a very proud Canadian or whatever, that type mm -hmm. of thing. And so I think he was like kind of trying to pass on to us that, yeah, this is how we say it in this country. And so what that did was like that his influence caused me to train myself to say schedule. Mm. And now I say it like I've. It feels wrong to me not to say it that way. You but are the it was second that, person I know that says schedule instead of schedule. Is the other person um, who says schedule, are they older? Uh huh. Because <laughs> yeah. I think it is a fairly generational thing. Like I don't know how many people go around now saying schedule, but you do. I do. <laughs> I do, and um, because I don't know. For me, it, I, I think it is a, a semi-patriotic thing where I feel like I'm 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 attaching myself to my Canadian roots. There you go. But, As uh, you wear a maple leaf jersey. <laughs> I wear a maple leaf jersey. That's right. So. No, it's interesting. Okay, going back to moms because it is Mother's Day, and you made fun of me for saying scissors, and that's how scissors is spelt. <laughs> scissors yes. is spelt. My mom, she says disgusting. Like she will pronounce every single letter in disgusting, and I'm like, mom, that's not how you say it. <laughs> Wait, disgusting? What do you say? I say disgusting, but she says disgusting. Like she pronounces. Oh, like the she G. like like dis. She goes all in. Oh, I yeah. see. Yeah. And I'm like, no, mom, it's disgusting. <laughs> Dis disgusting. <laughs> disgusting. Yeah. I'm like, that's disgusting. <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> well, I guess they're both right. But okay, but to be fair, a lot of Filipinos they do pronounce every single letter when they are reading English words. Well, that's because so that's, that. that's how Tagalog is written, right? Tagalog. Mm -hmm. I know. My mom was explaining that to me once. She was like, yeah, well, read out, read this out. And she's like, no, every letter. You pronounce every letter. I'm like... There's no silent I, nothing. Yeah. yeah. I thought I was pronouncing every letter, but okay. So that makes sense. You know, and obviously like, if, you're, if you're Filipino from the Philippines or coming any country, coming to mm -hmm. an English speaking country, you're, you're kind of, you're interpreting the language through your you know, native language, right? So it'll, mm -hmm. it's, it's an extra, it's an extra hurdle to have to jump over. Does that make sense? Just like how Scott says schedule. It's just a hurdle we got to get over. I'm just kidding. That's right. That's right, people. Does your schedule. dad say schedule or does your dad say schedule? I don't think he says schedule. You should ask so. him. I'm pretty sure he says schedule because I remember it was very specifically the teacher, that one teacher I had in grade seven and eight, actually, I think. And he said it. And in fact, I, if I ever meet him again, I, I'm going to, I'll, I'll, I'll mention that to him because that's like, maybe that's he's a, watching. Yeah, maybe he is. <laughs> that's a direct impact that he made on how I speak. And also probably a little bit how I like see the world too, which is a kind of a cool thing. But anyways, anyway, that's why I say it. I don't know um, how we got to this conversation. Oh yeah. Mother's Day. Mother's Day. <laughs> 
All because you're giving your mom and Lola flowers. <laughs> flowers, actually. In fact, you know what's cool is the flowers that I'm giving them is uh, my girlfriend and I, we drove out to, I don't remember what it's called, but it's out near Niagara. Mm -hmm. It's like an actual tulip field. Ooh. They grow these tulips and you can pay for admission. You can walk around and like, it's great for Instagram. Like so many people that were taking pictures, but then included in your admission is you can uh, pick up to 10 flowers. Nice. So this is the first time I'm going to be giving them a bouquet that I picked myself. That wasn't a dandelion from the ground. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the thing. Actually, what's funny is when I was standing in line, so you pick it, you pick your flowers, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have to go to the line and they wrap it for you. And I was standing in line, like looking at everybody else's. And everybody else's flowers looked like so much better than mine. I was like, I was like, this it's like, these look like bouquets that I bought in a store. And mine looks like exactly what you said. Mine looks like when I was like five years old, picking dandelions outside. But once they wrapped it in paper, it didn't look that bad. But I was just like, I clearly, I'm clearly lacking in the tulip picking. So worried. Yeah. But they have garden, uh, farm or flower gardens like that. Um, for my mom's birthday last year, because I know lavender is very popular. We went to a flower farm and people were able to pick flowers. But our photo shoot was actually when it closed. So no one was oh. in, our, in our photo shoot. But yeah, ours, there were people all over the place. And this one was apparently it's only open a couple weeks because I guess d tulips don't bloom for very long. Mm -mm. But uh, it was pretty nice. It was pretty, you know. We there went there you and go. walked around. So we'll see. I, I got to look through. I filmed some footage. Maybe there'll be a vlog. Ooh. Yeah. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Well, Regine, this was a good episode. <laughs> you know, we got into some some interesting places, some pretty dramatic places. Um, Leafs are playing tonight. They've pulled ahead in the series. They're winning two to one. They beat Ooh. Florida or Tampa at home, which was a pretty good game. One was really intense. Not intense. It was really, whoa. Yeah, and they, then game two, I was like, what the heck? <laughs> yeah. What's well, the game one came out and it, I feel like we surprised them in a sense. Like we almost like, I don't they know. We surprised we to, Toronto. <laughs> well, yeah, that's, that's true. But like we seem to catch them sleeping a little bit, you know? So we were able to, we basically plowed over them. And I was scared about game two because I was like, you know what? Like these guys, they've won the championship twice in a row. They, this team knows how to win. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I feel like they're going to come back. And then they did come back and they got the win. And I feel like the real test was game three is, is like, can Toronto bounce back or is Florida just going to go, right? But, uh, or Tampa, I should say, although Tampa's in Florida, but, you know, but, uh, but Toronto came back and I think they've got a chance. They've mm -hmm. got a chance. So we'll see. But uh, everybody, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for being here. Mm -hmm. Hit the like button if you haven't yet. Hit the subscribe button if you're new. And uh, tomorrow, there will be a stream. I think I'm going to play Delta Rune tomorrow, everybody. So feel free to tune in. And Where can uh, Regine... people find you, Scott? I'm just yeah. like, are you going to end the show? Hang on. What's happening? I was going to ask you <laughs> where people can find you. You guys can find me on my YouTube channel for The Pageant Sit Down. Um, on Wednesday, Liz and I actually did make the announcement that we are taking a break for the summer. So for the month of May, we will be doing, we are back to weekly interviews every Wednesday. So make sure you check it out. Check us out on Wednesday. Um, and for the month months of June to potentially August, we will be taking a break. Um, there's a lot of things going on in both our personal lives that we need a moment for ourselves to enjoy what, what's going on. So check us out on my YouTube channel for the pageant sit down where yes, I have caught on and said whoop, the like button. Thanks to Scott. So make sure you check us out. You can also follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at it's Regina Lena and follow my journey to galaxy internationals, which is just a couple months away at Mrs. Galaxy Southern Canada, 2022 on Instagram and Facebook. Scott, I can't talk as fast as you. Scott, where can people find you? You can find me right here where I'm. Uh, <laughs> you can find me right here at youtube.com slash Scott Dion Brown, where you're watching this very video. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Uh, you can also find me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash uh, Scott Dion Brown or dlive.tv slash Scott Dion Brown. But YouTube is the best place because not only do you get the live streams, you also get the songs. 
you get the vlogs, you get the comedy sketches, you get the gaming streams, you get everything. You can also find me on Instagram and Twitter, Scott Dion Brown, or uh, TikTok, Scott Dion Brown Official. But YouTube is the best place. Also, if you guys haven't yet, please check out my brand new song, Every Day, the acoustic version. Uh, it's uh, You can find that link in, his, in the description, but you can also add it to your Spotify playlist, add it to your Apple Music playlist. Brand new single, by me, every day. And uh, guys, thank you all so much for being here. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. People, if you haven't yet, make sure you call your mother. Mm -hmm. Let her know that you love her. <laughs> and that we said Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> and that we said Happy Mother's Day. Yeah, call your mother right now and tell her that Scott and Regine said Happy Mother's Day. Let them know Scott and Regine sent you. <laughs> there you um, go. All right, Regine, I'll see you uh, next time. See you next time. Bye. Bye, people. Thank you.